I became obsessed with filming and directing and, you know, Stanley Kubrick and Steven Spielberg and George Lucas, and I was always fascinated with the process of filmmaking. And, you know, I grew up in Boston, which is on the other end of the country from Hollywood. And, you know, people would say to me, oh, you, you'll never make it. You know, you have to be born there. You have to know someone. And I remember being literally, you know, 13 years old at my bar mitzvah when the rabbi has to say what, everyone's, what you're going to do with your life. And he said, Eli Roth is here. Today he's bar mitzvah. And he's going to be a, I remember I'm like adjusting his glasses going, a motion picture producer director. You immerse yourself in the material. You open yourself up. Uh, to what will come, because you don't know what's going to come. You might find a book, you might write a script, but you're not in the location. Once you're in the location with the actors, this thing sort of tend to sort of um, you know, find its place somehow. It's a lot of trust, I feel, what, what one has to have as a, uh, for me at least, as a, as, a, as a director. You have to open yourself up rather than sort of bring your stencil. When character and action can exist simultaneously and they can be they can uh, assist one another and build off one another. Um, those are always the, the ones that you remember. You know, you remember Die Hard because it was, because Bruce Willis's character was such a, uh, the, the everyman and such a great, uh, you know, the, everybody remembers like the glass in his feet. He's pulling glass out of his feet. It, it, it you, when you see stuff like that and you, you're able to really humanize and, and, and ground uh, a moment in something that everyone can understand. Everyone stepped on glass. It's always a big responsibility to to uh, direct because more than anything, you take the audience's time, um, and um, you, the, you're more responsible somehow to a book that is that loved because you don't want to ruin the book for for people who really love it. So, but so you have to be courageous and think that you have something to contribute, and you have to go to bed and fall asleep every night you must because you have to work tomorrow without being feeling too bad about the things where you felt it could have gone better. I don't think you ever know things are going to work out in any endeavor in life, but certainly not in a movie. And you can make a movie exactly the way you imagine it without compromise and have it go out and fail in the marketplace because of some fundamental uh, or disconnect between you as an artist and the, and the audience out there. And of course, that's what we all ultimately fear as filmmakers. We don't fear the fact that it's going to rain and ruin a day's shooting. We fear the fact that our kind of filter for what works for us emotionally in terms of what excites us on the screen is different than, uh, than, than the uh, audience at large. As long as there are interesting projects, you know, that get you excited about, um, not just about the process of filmmaking. I don't tend to make movies about movie making, which a lot of young directors tend to do. They, they, their movies are really just saying, I'm excited about movies. But to me, that's not enough. I mean, or, or it's not even something. Uh, using film to explore the human condition, it's the traditional thing of art. That's still what it means to me. It's, it's my instrument for exploring what it means to be a human being now. When I was a kid, I, I drew, you know, I drew a lot and, and I drew a lot of comic strips. And, um, and it took me a long time to work out that that was trying to make films rather than be a comic strip, strip artist. So I couldn't draw thumbs very well, so that, was, that, that route to me was closed. And, um, but I still kept doing it and kept writing stories and doing comic strips and writing stories and doing comic strips. When I was at school, there was, I, I kind of thought, oh, maybe this is the way to do this, is to film stuff, but there was no, you know, it was very early days of video cameras, so nothing really worked properly. And I always love reading these stories about, you know, like Spielberg and his dad and his Super 8 camera, and they used to make loads of movies. You know, we didn't, even, didn't have any money, so there was no Super 8 short films from coming out of my house. I've always made films. I mean, I started when I was seven, I think, on Super 8 films with my dad's camera. And, uh, and so I can't really imagine not making films in a way. And so I think I'm very lucky and very privileged, really, to have this outlet for my creative impulses, just things that I want to see as a, as a film goer. I think for me, really, everything I put into a film is based on the idea of me wanting to, you know, pay my ten pounds and sit in a movie theatre and, and watch that that on screen, and that's really where I uh, I try to stick to that initial impulse of making a film that I want to see as a film guy. Anybody who knows anything about movies knows that when a movie works, it's usually luck. You know, it's calculated. You know, you're 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 trying to elicit a certain response, but you're when it when it really happens, it's it's a confluence of so many. Um, um, 
you know, different career paths all crossing over at exactly the right moment. I actually have a lot of different emotions I want an audience to feel. I want them to feel, uh, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's funny stuff in there, I want them to be able to laugh. There's uh, exciting stuff in there, I want them to have the fun of the adventure. There's um, uh, 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 horrific stuff in there, and I want them to feel that pain. Uh, there's suspense sequences. I want them to be on the edge of their seat. There's uh, cathartic violence sequences. I want them to feel the catharsis. You try to find the truth in each scene and, and create an authenticity uh, in, a, in each of the scenes, and then hopefully when you put that together and you flick the on switch, the machine doesn't go kerflui. It kind of, it kind of works. And uh, and there, I think every director, whether they're adapting an unusual science fiction novel or or making any sort of film, they go in every morning terrified that what they're doing is not going to work. The only thing I think is about filming is that it's most enjoyable when you, you feel there's a certain amount of freedom on that day that some things might happen that are good that are not necessary in the script. You know, that I think when you feel like all you can do is kind of plow your way through the script and, and get to the end of the day and do exactly what you hoped at the beginning of the day, that I find quite boring. Uh, but as long as there's enough stuff, stuff going on, you kind of hope that out of all that stuff you can find something that's interesting to watch. The trickiest part is to keep it interesting and new and fresh because you're always terrified that you're going to slip into the the, 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 the cliches and and the obvious you know so you're always just trying to take it's weird because you're on that that's problem i find with working within any genre is that you're you're you're, you're in the waters and you, you you see the shipwrecks all over the place but you also see the you know the beacons, as it were, of of, of previous travellers, <laughs> to extend the analogy. Um, but you know, you, you know there's some good work out has been and will be great work out there. But you're very aware of the shipwrecks. The process of filmmaking is about capturing something that's in flux, that does not have a divinity that shaped it. Whether that divinity is you know a, a deity or whether it's the divinity of the written word, the screenplay. You've got to sort of free yourself from the sense that it's been previously created, it's been previously ordained, and get to what really drama is about, which is collision without knowledge of the consequences. And then you're in a realm where it's alive and it's in play, and then you create, if you can create those moments, you're creating pieces of urgency. And if you can put all those pieces together, then you've got a film with real drive. The way I function in my life is seven years at art school and I, st I still use it every day and that helps me think and when I'm reading it helps me read, it helps me devise and evolve with writers. So I, I do a lot of work with writers because a good screenplay is never going to land you dead. This is the first ever to happen in my entire career. You've got to develop everything yourself or if it lands it kind of be halfway there and then if it's halfway then you've got to acknowledge where you want to fix it you meet the writer and they either want to fix it or not. If they don't want to fix it, next. Uh, or we develop things from scratch. And that's, that's fundamentally the full-time job, apart from when I'm directing films. Every movie's a challenge. I, I don't think you ever have a comfort zone when it comes to being a filmmaker. I certainly haven't struck one yet, because <laughs> you're uh, spending a lot of somebody else's money and, and it's a risk and a gamble. And, um, you know, you, you've not only... You know, there's two things. I mean, you want to obviously... Um, you want, to, you want to make sure that, that whoever's paying for the movie gets their money back because it's, your career depends on it, otherwise you're not going to get to make many more films. Um, but at the same time, I'm in the entertainment business and I regard myself as an entertainer much more than an artist. Um, and so I want to make sure that the film I, I make gives people a, a good cinema experience. You know, they're paying their money, they, they have a certain expectation of, of um, what they're going to receive for that. And, um, just want to make a good escapist adventure movie. The fantasy is what we're doing now, right here in this room, with these lights and cameras and mirrors. Something else is existing there, I don't know what, but there's something happening that's not part of our normal day, uh, um, literal nature of how we live, but we're trying to create something different.